Hello, my name is Richard Cleaver. I'm an audio engineer and I work out of Kingston, Ontario, Canada. This is my project studio, Whisperwood Recording Studios. Uh, it's here that I do most of my mixing and editing work. And I've been working through a project uh, called the World Music Project. Uh, it's a collaborative effort uh, with a number of musicians uh, across the world. And they've asked me to, uh, to help mix their song and that's, uh, that's what I've been working through. Uh, you may have seen a previous video uh, where I was just starting the session and bringing the files in. This is actually part two of a series uh, and in this part I'll show you how I do with track management. When we last left this session we had quite a few tracks. I wasn't sure which ones were mono and which ones were stereo. So I've listened to every one of them. I have 62 tracks so far in here and probably about 12 of them uh, uh, were in fact stereo tracks. The, uh, the rest of them, out of 50 or so uh, tracks, were actually um, uh, mono tracks. So I feel better knowing that I've got that looked after. And I've also gone through this session and I have renamed um, uh, many of the tracks. Some of the tracks I, I, I left as is, but, uh, but I renamed them. So as you can see right now, it still is a, a session where um, there's not all that much organization. It's just really just a, a sequence of tracks. So what I like to do as a starting point uh, is I, <laughs> I like to at least physically get like tracks together. And uh, when I look at the list here, I know I've got some uh, vocal tracks. And so I'm actually going to uh, put the vocal tracks towards the bottom part of the session. And um, so I'll probably start with those. Uh, and it looks like I have at least six of them because I can see a few of them here. So I'm going to select them and move those tracks down to the bottom. And there they are. And I have a few more vocal tracks in there, I'm assuming, if I numbered them correctly. So I see one there, and I see one there. There must be another one somewhere. There it is. Okay. So hopefully I can take one, two, and three and drag them all down here. All right, so now that I've grouped the vocal tracks together, uh, what I would like to do is color code them. Uh, so I've, I've, I've put uh, vocal tracks, um, there's six of them, I've grouped them together, I've put them at the bottom of the session. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, color code them all. And uh, so I just click on the uh, sort of open area beside the name of the track. Um, there's really no magic recipe, I just pick a color that I think might be fine. Vocals tend to be pretty important, so I think gold is probably a nice uh, color uh, uh, for the tracks. And the clips in the tracks, I'll also put gold. And uh, so when that, uh, unfortunately I have to select them first, so I'll do that. Um, but there they are. So now what I have uh, for the session is, is I, I at least have my vocal tracks all uh, set up. In, in, in a color format and grouped together. So the next one I'm going to work on, or the next grouping, uh, will be the violin tracks. Um, they, they look like they belong together, and I have a few of them. So there's four of them here, and again I'll put them just in front of the vocals. Um, oh look, we found another vocal track. Isn't that something? All right, that's fine. So when it goes, gold is what we wanted it. And we'll just get all the clips to be gold as well. All right. So the violins, one through four. There's another violin track here, six. Um, if I've done this properly, there should be a couple more somewhere. Let's take a look. There's violin five.
Okay, so all of our violin tracks are now together. So we'll select we'll select all of them. Um, I don't know, blue is fine. And again, we'll just make sure that all of the clips are also the same color. And there we go. So now we have <laughs> our violin section together. It's going to be a little trickier now because many of the parts are not quite the same. But guitar parts, there's quite a few of those. So I'll, I'll get all the guitars together. That sounds like it might be a good idea. So I'll pull them down. And I'll put them in front of the violins. And there must be another guitar track somewhere. And there is. So I'll bring it down. So you get the idea. Now, this session is, is a bit different than others that, uh, that I work with. Uh, because of the nature of the instrumentation, it's not your typical rhythm section where you would have bass, drums, um, guitars, keyboards, vocals. In, in that type of session, I generally prefer having the bass and kick close to each other. And uh, so I have a certain system that I use to approach um, that type of session. Uh, this one I wasn't quite sure what to, uh, to expect, but, but you know, there's quite a variety of uh, interesting instruments, and I'm not quite sure how to group them yet. But guitars I know how to group, and uh, so we'll put those tracks together. And, I don't know, guitar players, should we, should we go red? Why not? Okay, and then the uh, tracks will also be done the same way. All right. Now the next set of instruments that I'll probably tackle will be pianos. I've got uh, a few of them, so we'll put the pianos in front of the guitars. And then we'll do a light blue. You can see already as we're starting to do this work that organizing the tracks actually um, makes the project uh, even seem um, a little more evident. You know, guitar tracks, piano tracks, violin tracks. It's, it starts to put a bit of a uh, theme together for the, uh, for the music. I have named all of the tracks. I have color-coded all of the tracks. And I've actually organized them as well. So I have all of the vocal tracks uh, all together, all of the violin tracks all together, uh, all of the uh, similar tracks, uh, uh, cellos and violas, I, I, so I've got them uh, grouped uh, with the uh, violins. All of the guitar tracks are together. I had a variety of stringed instruments, and uh, since they are similar to uh, a guitar in some respects, I, I grouped them there. Uh, pianos, uh, all grouped together, uh, wind instruments, bagpipes, flutes, trumpets uh, together, uh, all of the percussion instruments uh, together and the bass instruments together. One of the things that I uh, rely on extensively uh, within the uh, Pro Tools environment, uh, I rely on uh, VCA uh, tracks. So let's go into our tracks. We're going to create some, uh, uh, some new tracks and they're going to be um, VCA tracks uh, and, uh, and I need 10 of them. So there they are. Now these uh, VCA tracks uh, will need to be assigned uh, to particular groups. So what I will do is I'll take the bass tracks for example, I will group them, uh, but what I will do in this case uh, I'm going to treat them strictly uh, as a mix group, not as an edit group or a mix edit group. Um, the first VCA uh, is going to be called uh, bass, and it has the two bass instruments in it. Uh, I'll assign that to VCA1, and that's done. Uh, now, I'll actually rename the VCAs because I, I prefer <laughs> to know uh, what I've got. Okay, so VCA2 is going to be all of, the, uh, all of these tracks that are rhythmic, percussive. So I'll set them up as a group. 
again, mixed group, we'll call them, um, I guess I'll just use the percussion for want of a better term. And I'll assign it to VCA2. And, uh, and I'll name it that way. And then our last VCA will be our vocals. Okay. All right, now I know you're probably asking, or maybe you're not, <laughs> you might be asking what are VCAs and why, why did you just do all of that? Well, the advantage of uh, using VCAs um, within the Pro Tools environment, it allows one channel to represent many channels. And those many channels can have many different outputs. They don't all have to have the same output. That's a little different if, you, if you're familiar with subgroups. You can set up a subgroup in Pro Tools, but there's a different relationship between a subgroup and the, and the tracks that support the subgroup. Uh, you're now pretty much controlling your entire mix. All of these channels, you can actually control most of them really just using 10, um, 10 faders. Uh, and with the console that I use, it has a spill capability. So if I'm on a VCA track, uh, and let's say it's the vocals, uh, and we know that we have six vocal tracks, on this console, I can spill, and I can see all of those six tracks right away. So it actually makes it easier for me to find my way around the console. Uh, I tend to not use the mouse very often at all when I actually get to, to the mix. So I like to set up uh, VCA channels for the session. Uh, the other thing that I like to do uh, is I like to bring in uh, a set of standard effects. Uh, and I usually import those from um, uh, sessions that I've uh, worked on. So all this does uh, in terms of the uh, session itself, it, um, it provides, uh, um, it just provides me a standard set of effects which are uh, all that I really want. So there we go. We've, uh, we've actually made quite a bit of progress. So we have, uh, we have um, most of the track management activities complete. There are a few other things that I will do, but, but just to highlight what has been done, I went in, uh, listened to make sure that I caught all of the stereo tracks, and, and there were a few that I'd missed, so I, I put them into the session. Uh, I color-coded. Uh, all of the tracks, group them in a way that I can visually see them both by color and, and by grouping. Took the grouping and applied it to VCA groups so that from a mixed perspective I have a finer control over the session itself. Uh, and uh, I've also uh, loaded in uh, the standard effects list that I typically start mixes with. I may change some of the effects for this particular session, but it gives you an idea as to uh, how I've approached it. So for me, what's left to do at this part, and I'm, I'm not, not going to sh show you this part, you'll see it when you, when you see the next video, uh, I divide the song up. So I basically mark uh, sections of the song. Again, uh, when, when I start mixing, it makes it convenient for me to jump to certain sections. Uh, but I will have another video where I'll show you how I do the, the marking, uh, and you can see where it goes uh, from there. So thank you for being with me and spending a little bit of time on, uh, on this session.